Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we're going to take a look at a little piece of software called Filter Pixel. Filter Pixel can help you cull your images more quickly and easily using AI algorithms, and it's pretty amazing in what it can do. The problem is Filter Pixel is actually more geared toward portrait photographers than what I tend to do. So we actually have a special guest on the channel today. Julia Grimo is our video editor and instructor here at the school, and she is also a portrait and wedding photographer in Western Montana. So she's gonna take it away, show you guys how to use this software and do a little tutorial. I also wanna make it clear that this video was sponsored by Filter Pixel. So huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and launch into it. Hey guys, um, I'm Julia Grumo. Like Forrest said, I do all of the YouTube editing and I am also an instructor here at RMSP. But when I'm not instructing, on weekends mainly, I am a wedding and portrait photographer. That being said, I don't have very much time in my day to spend doing mundane things like culling my photos. Culling photos means that you go through every single photo that you took during your session or during a 10 hour wedding day and you find the good from the bad. It can be a pretty tedious process because during a wedding I can take up to 5,000 images and that means it's gonna probably take me five hours to cull it. I just don't have a lot of time in my day anymore because I'm filling it with work and I love, I love the creative aspect of all my work and the mundane things I want to hand off. I want to stay creative and stay focused on the creative side of things. That's why about a year ago I was looking for a program to help me with this. And when I was looking, I found Filter Pixel. Filter Pixel was kind of a new-ish program. Um, I had never heard of it before, but I decided to try it out. I was super skeptical at first because as a photographer, you always wanna keep things close to you and never give your like photos to someone else to look at. But what's nice is Filter Pixel is at your fingertips. You are in control of everything that it does. I've saved so much time and energy not culling my photos myself and just editing the photos that this AI program has called for me. How Filter Pixel works is the AI program looks for focus and eye quality and a lot of other small details in all your photos. It does one culling process first and then it goes through a couple other different culling processes and you watch it the entire way and you choose and tell it whether it's doing a good job or not. What's amazing is that the program is actually self-learning. So the more you use Filter Pixel, the more it's gonna learn which photos you like and which photos you wanna keep. Enough talk about the program, let's get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Filter Pixel, which just lives on my desktop. Now that I have Filter Pixel opened up, you can see the little home page. On the left here, or this kind of main area of the home page, are where all the projects live. So this is where all your folders of photos are gonna live. I delete all of mine when I'm done because this does not actually store your photos. It just stores the project of the culling. So you can delete them once you're done culling and putting them into somewhere else. On the right here, you can actually see that I've saved 97 hours and 47 minutes of my life. I love that it says, that has been put back into your life. Um, you can see your account here. You can actually search by name or date of your projects. Another great part about Filter Pixel is their support system. When I contacted them the other day because I was having an issue with the program, they instantly got back to me probably within the next three minutes, helped me with my issues. I sent them some screenshots without them even asking about what I was dealing with, and they got down to the problem, never left me on red. They were so great. You can already tell it's a great program just by its support network. Okay. So first thing we need to do is import our photos. So we need to click on this create new project and you're just going to click on it and find where your photos live, whether that's an SD card or on your computer. My photos live on an external hard drive so I'm going to go and find them. And then I'm gonna select the folder. Now it's gonna open up. So you'll name it whatever you want it to be called. Mine is the year, month, date, and then whatever the session was. And then there's gonna ask you, choose to describe this shoot best. This is gonna help with the culling process. When you tell it which shoot it was, then it's gonna look for certain things. Like for this one, it's gonna be multiple people. Portraits are more like couples and single people instead of like big families. I'm gonna say, portraits because it's just two people and I'm gonna say start now. This is gonna run the initial call. 
the initial cult goes through all of the really bad photos. Photos that are completely underexposed, photos that are completely out of focus, bigger issue photos is what it's doing through this first call. Depending on how many photos you have is how long it's going to take. For weddings, it takes up to probably 20, 15 to 20 minutes for me, but for smaller projects, it takes like five minutes, six minutes. It's amazingly fast for this first run through. And what we're going to see up top here is it's going to put it into a couple of categories. The first one is accepted. The second one is unlabeled, which are things that don't have major problems, so it could be accepted. And then the last one is major issue photos. So it's going to give me a little estimate of time up here and how much percentage it is done going through that first call. This right now is giving me a timeline of five minutes. I have about 770 images in here, so five minutes is not bad at all compared to how long it would normally take me to go through 800 photos, probably an hour just to go through probably the first set of images. And you'll notice these numbers get higher on the side as it goes through all the images. So this is going through all of the images with major issues and they're just taking them as reject. They're not deleting them or anything, they're just taking them as rejected photos. So as we have a few seconds left, I'll tell you exactly what this program did. It did its first little go through of all of my photos and it found round 46, it's still going through them, really bad images. That means these are images that are completely underexposed, that completely don't have any focus, just the major issue images. Okay, so it's gonna tell me first pass of culling is completed, click auto select to select your best photos. Once the first culling is done, it's not gonna tell you that any of your photos have been accepted until you click that auto select button. So, so far all it's done is gotten rid of the really bad images, separated them from the images that it can actually go through and find faces and find focus. What it's also done is grouped similar images. What I can do is press this button in the corner and I'll see that there's six images that look exactly alike. And the program's asking me which one do you like best? And I can actually click on the one I like best and it will be my topmost photo. To move on to the next step, we're gonna hit this auto select. This will automatically select the best photos for you. You can actually stop at this point before you go to auto select and select all your images yourself, but so far, you've only saved an hour of your time. You can save even more time by clicking this auto select for you. What auto select is gonna do is find the best focus and the best images, find what images are best in the group of images. It's gonna help you a lot. So let's go ahead and click auto select and see what it does. It has selected for me 74 photos. Out of my 700 plus photos, it decided that 74 of my photos were pretty good. Which, yes, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit that it only found 74, but this is a very technically correct program, and so some things that I would have been okay with, like a little bit of a misfocus, but an image that I still like, I can actually go back and keep. Right now, it's just finding the technically correct images. And for this session, it found 74, which is pretty great. If I delivered 74 images to my clients, they'd be very happy. Right now, what I'm seeing is those 74 images. How I know that is I am just clicked on this little accept button, and this is filtering just like Lightroom, all of the accepted photos. If I clicked this button, it would do all the accepted photos plus all of the photos that are unlabeled. Unlabeled images means that they're not really that great, but they're also not bad. Th so I can actually go through all these unlabeled and label some as good or bad. But right now they're sitting in the middle as these aren't great, they're, you have better ones, and the AI program found my better ones for me. So the topmost photo in all of these photos is the one that it has picked. So there's actually 32 images that it found that are very similar right here. But for me, there's a couple in here that I like that it did not pick. So what I can do is I can click on a photo and I can say, I want it to be tagged as accepted and I want it to go to my accepted photos. So all I have to do is select the photo and press P as in like pick flag in Lightroom. All of the keyboard shortcuts here kind of mirror Lightroom. So if I wanted to untag a photo, say this first photo I actually don't like, I can use the U button and untag it. Or 
just like in Lightroom, I can press the X button and reject it. But I do like this one, so I'm gonna press the P button and I'm going to accept it. So now I've got two of those photos that I've accepted. What's nice is I can actually go through these images and label them like I would in Lightroom. Let's say I found images that I really liked and my normal workflow is to take it into Lightroom and label it as red. What I would do is I would open the photo up and I'd do six for red, just like you would do in Lightroom. So it has the ratings for stars as well and also all those colors that you get in Lightroom. Just like in Lightroom, I can apply a filter and I can say, show me all of my red images and it will do the same. And then I'll say that I don't want any filters on it. And now I'm looking at those 75 accepted photos. Let's go ahead and look at the photos that it rejected. This photo has no focus whatsoever. It rejected it. This photo, way too dark. Actually, all of these photos, way too dark. It had gotten very dark very quickly where I was at, and so it rejected all of those underexposed images. This photo, just not very really flattering, and her eyes are closed, so it rejected it for me. Let's go to the ones that are in between. These are photos that are very similar to the ones that it chose, but weren't quite as good which I agree, these are not quite as good. And I've not seen any photos that I'm like, oh yeah, I wish that this one was in there. And if I did find one that I wish was in there, say I kind of liked this one and didn't see it in there. The focus is okay, looks fine to me. What I can do is I can actually tag it and it will go into my accepted. So now I've got 76 accepted photos instead of 75. But here's the thing, it already accepted this photo, but now I accepted this photo and there's not much change. It is just trying to help me save time on things that are very similar. Say you want to narrow down your search. 76 images is quite a lot, and say you want to narrow it down to maybe like 30 images to deliver to your clients. So down here you can adjust the focus quality telling it you want it to be a lot more picky on focus. So if I bring that up, it's gonna narrow down my photos. Let's say I do it by 50%. It has now narrowed down my photos to 53 accepted photos. It's gotten rid of 23 more images, condensed them really. And now let's say I want better eye quality. So I'm gonna bring that to 25% more. So then you just kind of mess around with these dials at the bottom to filter down the amount of photos. But you can't go too far, otherwise the AI program will find too many things wrong. So say I went to 50% of good eye focus. I'm gonna get two photos. That's because in a lot of my photos, they're looking down. And so the eye focus isn't there. Like this photo. The eyes are not pointed at the lens, so the eye focus is not there. So you kind of have to mess around with these dials a little bit to the point of where you want this accepted photo number to be. You'll also notice that it gives little tags to the bottom of each photo. They're kind of like keywording in Lightroom. Down here on this photo, it says partial out of focus, low quality eyes, but it also says kisses. They're doing little nose kisses, which I think is kind of cute. Um, this photo, it gives it the tag partial out of focus and then low quality eyes things like that, where you can go through and figure out what it found wrong with these. It actually even found a baby in this maternity photo. Now that we've gone through all of our photos and picked the ones that we wanna keep and gotten rid of the ones that we don't wanna keep, now we need to edit them. That means we need to take them into our editing program. I use Lightroom to edit and this program works with Lightroom by importing them straight into Lightroom for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and press export, which is at this top right corner. And it's gonna say, do you want to export to Lightroom? Do you want to export to a local folder or export to CSV? What I wanna do is export to Lightroom. It also has a bunch of advanced exporting options to choose from. What I can do is tell it whether I want all my accepted photos, whether I want all my accepted and unlabeled photos, or if I just wanna export all of them, which would kind of defeat the purpose of culling. So I just want 
my accepted photos to go into Lightroom for me. Before I hit export, I want to open up my Lightroom that I want it to export into so that the AI program can sense which catalog I want it to go into. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Lightroom catalog. Now that I have Lightroom open, I'm going to minimize it and I'm going to say export my photos to Lightroom. And it is going to open up that Lightroom catalog that I have open. And now you can see all of the photos that it's gonna import are the ones that it has culled through and selected, which is pretty amazing. Another way I can export is if I take my filter pixel window and put it to half my screen and my Lightroom to the other half of my screen, I can select all of my accepted photos by doing Control A and dragging them onto my Lightroom. And it will show that same screen of all of my 53 pictures picked out of my 750 pictures. And then I can go ahead and select import all 53 images that I picked in Filter Pixel are now into my Lightroom. And they are DNG images because I take photos in RAW. So it keeps that RAW and puts it into Lightroom as well. You'll also notice that any labels I gave my photos, like this photo I labeled in red in Filter Pixel, moves into Lightroom. As well as all of the keywords that Filter Pixel gives it. Not only did Filter Pixel cull through all my images, all 700 plus images and found 53 of my best images, it also kept all of the tag color tags that I did in the program, as well as made me keywords to hopefully help me in my organization later. What's so amazing about this is all I have is these 53 images. I can now delete all the images that I didn't take into Filter Pixel because those are all very bad images. Always double check that those are the bad images that you don't want anymore before you delete, of course. But I'm not filling up my hard drive quite as much because I'm doing all the cooling before it even goes into Lightroom. And this has saved me so much time because all I'm looking at right now are the good images. All I have to edit now are these good 53 images. And that took me probably an hour or less to do. This has saved me so much time in my career already. I am so thankful for this program because I just don't have the time to do this calling anymore. And it's better than passing them through the internet to try and get them to someone else to call for me. I have it at my fingertips. I have full trust in the program. If we go back into Filter Pixel and we actually close out of our project, that project will remain there as long as we have those photos plugged in. But now I can delete it because it's done its job. Thanks again to Filter Pixel for sponsoring this video. I love this program and I've loved it for probably over a year now. It has saved me almost over a hundred hours now um, in my business, day-to-day -day life. Thanks guys for watching my first video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button or comment down below any questions or concerns you have about Filter Pixel. I'd be happy to answer them or hit that notification bell and stay tuned for our next video. Bye.